okay so let's continue now from now on i'm going to provide the source code because we've begun writing some code i'm going to provide the source code in the there'll be a link in the description if you want to download and check out the code all right so we've instantiated our class here but our class is empty so we need to add some functionality to this class so it can do something because right now it doesn't do anything so in order to add functionality to a class of course you're going to add functions okay so we're going to call this function uh, so for every uh, small activity that you want to do it's better to instead of writing so much code in one function you can uh, put several smaller functions to do small small activities that are repeatable it always works better okay so what we want to do here is create one function called a constructor so this function will have a name because normally you have a function name here but we'll do underscore underscore and say construct like this okay so that's our function uh, okay let's see if there's no error let's refresh okay so no error everything is fine now what this construct mean this is a special function if you put two underscores like this it means the name of the function you're putting here <clears throat> is what is known as a magic method because these functions in here are called methods so for as long as a function is inside a class it's called a method however it's still a function so this is a special function when you write it like this it means when you instantiate a class this function will run automatically on its own so if i had another function like a function another like this all right <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> this function will only run if i call it this one will run immediately we do this so to prove that i'm going to echo something from here and just say here like that okay and let's refresh and there we go you see but if i move this here in there we won't see anything because this will only run when we call it as you can see there okay pretty good so just wanted to get that out of the way so this means we can run anything here now another thing is before i delete that let me remove this another thing is whatever value we pass here will be captured there so if for example here i had a value um let me just call, put some text my name and then i'll capture that here because these two represent the construct function brackets there so here i'll call this one a string like that str short for string and then i'm going to echo that here like that so what i've done here is when i'm doing the instantiation i'm sending in a ve uh, a value here which will be captured there and then we're going to show it there okay so as you can see if i refresh there we go now if for some reason i do not pass in a, f a value here then i'm going to get an error because i'm expecting a value from there because i did put a variable there i'm expecting it to capture something from here but the problem is here we are empty so it's going to get lost so let's see what it will say and it's going to say fatal error now a fatal error means the program was unable to continue this is why it's a fatal error there are different types of errors there's syntax error syntax error means you didn't type something well so for example if i uh maybe i did this right that's a syntax error right there so i'm going to refresh it will say pass error but it says syntax error and it's a unidentified identifier app so on line three so it's telling me there's something wrong with how i typed this here but then this fatal error just means the program was unable to continue because it doesn't know what to do so fatal error and it will tell you too few arguments on the function app construct so the arguments are too few arguments are these things you put over here so it's telling me that when i instantiated the class i didn't put enough arguments to match that so if i now 
put that argument, no problem. But I can put more arguments here if I want and it won't matter. This will not cause an error because at least I have one argument here that will cover that. It will just ignore the rest of these. So if I come back here and refresh, now we get that echo as intended. Okay, so some things to keep in mind. Now, if for example, you want to put an optional, uh, you don't want it to cause an error when you forget to write something, then you can give it a default value. So I'll call default value like this. So which means whether I supply one variable here or not, it doesn't care because it has a default value to go with. So you see that default value is what we are going to echo out over here. And there we go. Very good. And then if we do provide uh, a main value, then that will be replaced. The default value will be replaced. We'll show this instead. So main value. Okay. So enough of the basics. You can check out the basics in my series. Uh, on OOP. So now that we have that out of the way, what I want us to do is show you what the app function is going to solve. Now this one wants to create a router. Now in order for the router to work, it has to know what's inside our URL because the router really what it's doing is getting what's in the URL and packaging it nicely for the controller. Okay, so how do we get what's in the URL here? Now URLs, we get that from the get variable, okay? So if I now say uh, print readable, now instead of echo, we use print r. If we're expecting an array or an object, anything that isn't just a string, we use print r. So I'm going to do this. Okay, so this get variable is a super global that comes with uh, PHP, okay? So once you do that, what you're trying to do is get things from here, from the URL. Now there are no query strings here. So if I refresh, you see that it's an empty array. It's an empty array, but if I put a question mark that des describes the query string. So if I put a question mark like this at the end, but let me explicitly call the PHP uh, index file like that, so that there's index.php. And then if I put a question mark and say maybe a is equal to, and then I type a value of let's say one, enter. Now you see that there's something in that array. So the get variable is there to get anything that's after the question mark. So question a is equal to one. And then if we put and and say uh, b is equal to two, and then we put another and sign and say c is equal to three, you will see all items in here. So that's how we get the values from there and use them if we want. They are nicely packaged in an array. The only problem is we don't want our URL to look like this. What we really want is for our URL to look like something like this, slash, uh, we want this to have a page number. So public, that's the main folder. And then maybe we go to products and then slash, um one maybe something like this if we want to see product one we we'll say products slash one now if i press enter here the problem is it's going to tell me this is not found which is true there's no folder because it's looking for a folder it's saying public slash products slash one so here it's looking for inside the public folder looking it's looking for the products folder and then slash folder one that's what it's looking for. So if I were to create this folder and then put an index file there, it's going to load that file. But this is not the behavior we want. Instead, what I want is to tell it that if it really can find this folder or file, instead of showing me this not found, what it should do is create a get variable and load everything that's after the, this main folder everything which is product slash one it should put that inside a get variable so i can get it and manipulate it myself okay so in order to do this we want to use an ht access file because we're trying to tell apache what to do apache is the server remember it's right there so we want to tell apache what to do so i have uh some code here that does exactly that so all you have to do is copy this code 
into your own system. So just like you remember, we did some security things on assets here. Let me delete this new text document. We had put an HD access file here to manipulate uh, Apache and tell it not to show the directory listing. Instead, now we want to do this in the public folder itself. Okay, we want to tell Apache how to handle things here. So I'm going to right click in the public folder and say new file and paste this. So this is how we manipulate Apache. So here I'm going to type, this is in the public folder, I'll type dot ht access. Okay, ht access and save. So I have an ht access in the public folder because that's a landing page. So here we're telling it that the rewrite engine should be on to switch it on so that we can rewrite, we can put some rules for our rewrite. So here, what this one is doing now, copy everything here. Don't miss a symbol or an exclamation point or a dash. Everything must be as you see it here. Otherwise it won't work. It will cause an error. So here we are saying rewrite condition. And we are telling it that if there's a file name in the URL, if it's a file name, let's say I'm trying to access an image, okay? It should ignore, it should load that image, okay? If it really finds an image in the server with that link. If there's a directory, like a folder that's actually found, then load it, okay? So because we don't want to disturb the normal operation of the server. So this is what is preserving that. But then we have a rewrite rule here. And what we are saying is from the beginning to the end, anything that is there in the query string should be pushed to the index page. If it's not a valid file and it's not a valid folder, then get whatever is in the query string and put it in this variable called URL. Now you can change this URL to anything. It can be A, it can be D, it doesn't really matter. I just named it URL because that's what I want to use it. You can call it string, that's up to you. So what we're telling it is that if the link does not lead to a normal file, doesn't lead to a normal directory, then put everything in the query string, put it in the index, to, send it to the index.php file, open the index.php file, and then create a query string in URL. So let's see this in action. Let me save this and let's come back here. Now, remember that in my index page, what I have done is I'm telling it to print whatever is in the get variable, okay? So let's come back here and see. Now, if I refresh, instead of telling me not found, you see what it has done here? It has created a URL, uh, it has created a URL query string and put everything. You see here this product slash one, that's what's there. If I remove everything here, you see it's an empty array now. But then if I type something like products three comma five comma six, this is not a valid folder. So if it doesn't find a valid folder, it's just going to open the index file and give you everything that's after the main thing inside this URL array. So as you can see here, if I change the HD access, I change this URL part to A like this, you will see that it will say A here because that's what I've told it. So I'll leave it at URL like that. So what this means is that regardless what I type here like this, only the index page will be loaded. Look at that. Okay. So we don't get that file not found anymore. So like this, we can manage our own URL string. This is the point of this whole thing to be able to manage our URL string instead of allowing Apache to do it. But keep in mind that if I go to assets, for example, there's a real index.php file there. Let's say I go to assets slash index.php. It has actually loaded that file, which says access denied. So this is not Apache. This is just a file we have in the assets folder that says access denied. So it has managed to load that file without a problem because it's actually a valid file. But if at the end of this, I type something like this, then now it loads the index page because it can't find this index.php at the end. So you see, it goes back to the index page when it can't find that file. So this is a fail safe mechanism and 
this is good, right? Okay, so now that we have that thing set up, we are good to go to the next video.